Good morning and welcome to episode 8 of the Sweater Knitting Show, the only knitting show that talks specifically about sweaters. Just sweaters. Just yes. sweaters. No socks, no scarves. No hats, cowls. Mitts. None of those shawl, shawly things. We don't talk about those stuff. We talk about sweaters. So Just I'm sweaters. Lacey Lene and this is my co-host. Johnny Vasquez. And today... What are we going to be talking about, Lace? We have a special guest, Heather Wolfel from UU Yarn. Yes, very excited to have her on. She's been a good friend for a few years now. And we're going to be talking about knitting sweaters for kids, specifically. We'll also be checking in with Heather's progress on her very own 30-day sweater. And we'll be talking about our progress, or lack of progress, lack of progress <laughs> uh, on our sweaters, too. Uh, we'll be bringing Robert on later to sh talk about all of your projects that you've been sharing on social media in the last 24 hours. And um, I, think that's it. I think that's pretty much it. Uh, we, have, we have a big event tonight uh, where we will be doing our live knit-along hangout. Uh, we call it our epic hangout because it's like three hours of just sitting and knitting. And hanging out. I'm yeah. And really all we do is just kind of sit here like this and look at the screen. We don't talk. We just focus on the knitting. Right. And that's pretty much it. That's not true. And tonight we are going to announce our winners of this week's giveaways. So let's get started. Um, how about you talk about your progress first? Yeah, so uh, yesterday on the show I knit one row and then... After the show, I knit another row. Didn't you knit a row at lunch? And then I knit a row at lunch. So I got three rows done yesterday, <laughs> which is... Which actually, three rows on that yarn is pretty much like an inch. Yeah, it's probably... You know, I should measure my raglan lengths so before I keep knitting, because I may be at where I need to separate the sleeves from the body. Uh, um, yeah, that probably would be a good idea. So, Lacey's going to talk about her progress right now while I go find my measuring tape so that I can measure my sweater. I, my progress is not that exciting to look at. It just, because it's stockinette, so it's like, well, I have a longer tube now. Um, I'll show you. Hang on. Ta -da! It's getting longer. Um, we're down past, like, the, we're kind of towards the hippish area now, and I have a ton of of time to knit today because I actually have to go get my hair done um, and I take a bus out to Santa Monica which is like two hours and then I sit there and get my hair colored for like three hours and then I have another bus ride back for two hours so now, I'm hoping to get finished with the body today. You have to tell people why you have to go out to Santa Monica to get your hair done because it's oh. not like she's just going to her like you know <laughs> her friend to go do her hair I am a hair model for Vidal Sassoon, so whenever they do shows, I am in them. So basically it's like a runway show for hair, which is cool. Um, but between shows, they have to keep my hair nice so that when we do shows, it's like easier for them to work with. And we've got a big show next month, so I have to go in today and get some upkeep done so that, you know... My I hair. My hair doesn't, like, fall off. Right. I actually auditioned to be a hair model with Vidal Sassoon, but they said that... Um, you had to have hair on the top of I your didn't head. have the right look. Yeah. So, unfortunately, we have not been able to work together in the hair modeling industry. That's true. But considering they have a show on cable called Beard Wars, I could maybe get into, like, the beer competition circuit... Yes. And, you know, maybe go that route. I think all of you guys should join that. Bobby and Ronnie. All the brothers have beards, so maybe you guys should all go on the beard show. Well, except Billy, our littlest brother. He's yeah. just now getting, like, facial hair. So maybe not. it'll be a couple more years before he can compete yeah. on our level. All right, well, um, so here's my plan. With my sweater. I'm not actually not at my raglan length. I only got about an inch done okay. yesterday. So I need another inch before 
I can knit. So here's what I'm planning on doing. I'm going to knit today, like in this show, and then up until tonight, and that will be my, my progress for the last day. And then I have three hours that I can knit during the hangout. During the hangout. And that'll be your progress for today. Y exactly, yes. Okay. So I think I should be able to catch up, if not pass up, my progress. I won't be able to finish my whole sweater by tomorrow like you seem to be. Well, it's not going to be entirely finished. I still have to knit the cowl, but I could technically wear it tomorrow. But we'll see how that goes. I'll let you know tomorrow. We'll see. So today we have a special guest, our friend Heather, and we are going to talk with her. Do you want to bring her on? Yes, let's, uh, let's bring Heather on. Heather, can you hear us? Can we hear you? Okay. Yes, I'm there here. we go. Good morning. Hi, Heather. So Heather is the owner of UU Yarns, yep. and which is a really cool superwash uh, merino yarn. Well, they have um, their Pacific yarn is fully worsted. That's their name. Right. Yeah. So I'm a UU Yarn Company, and I have one yarn. And like Lacey said, it's called Woolly Worsted. It's right here. You think got hearts on it. Yes. <laughs> it was unintentional, all the hearts, but I think I just liked it so much my logo became hearts. <laughs> 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 um, so, Woolly Worsted is a merino, 100% merino, so it's really soft, and it's also specially treated, so it's a super wash yarn. So it's great to work... Um, for kids' clothes, or uh, you know, I wear it all the time too. But it makes it—it's a basic worsted weight yarn, so you can make it into virtually any knitted garment. And what she's not saying is that it has actually like freaking amazing to knit with. It just feels so nice, and the stitch definition is really great too. So. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I like it a lot. <laughs> but I appreciate you saying that. That's great. Now, how did you get into creating your own yarn line? Well, I'm a graphic designer, and I've always done marketing, so uh, I had wanted a product of my own for years, and I became a knitter, and I really liked it, and the opportunity kind of came up uh, to make this yarn, and we said, okay, let's give it a try. So <laughs> um, I started out with like I said, one yarn, and my first launch had seven colors. And then um, I've been fortunate each year, I've been going two years now, and each year I've been able to add more colors. So the first year I added five, and I went up to seven, uh, 12 colors. And then um, this past fall I just added eight more colors. So now we have 20 in the, in the line. And they're, they're really great colors. I think, like, they're so versatile, like the, the colors that you've chosen are like really bright and modern. I really like the colors that you have, so. Thank you. Yeah, I can, um, I can do a little screen share over to my, over to my website real quick. Sure. So there's, uh, there's all the colors. Yay. So I'm making my sweater over here in red poppy. I recently made one with the pistachio brushed silver and then black. It was a little boy sweater. We actually have a pattern for it coming out soon. Ooh. But um, I love it. It's so adorable. So I'm really excited. So let's talk about knitting um, sweaters for kids because your yarn is really, really great for that. So yeah, because it's um, – because Woolly Worsted is – a super wash, it makes it really, I like to call it easy care, because it's kind of no think, especially for a busy mom or something like that. It, she can toss a blanket in the washer and it'll come out just as good as before. That is a huge thing. I think people forget that, like, when they're knitting sweaters or anything for kids, that kids are really messy. <laughs> and right. Like, whatever you knit with, you probably wanted to be able to, like, run in the wash or easy to wash because you know yeah. you know 
get food on themselves or play in the mud or whatever else happens. Um, so right. having really easy care. Yeah. Well, part of the development of Wooly Worsted, I focused on making sure it um, is very resistant to pilling, too. So it's a it's a tough wearing yarn, uh, which just makes it all the better. So it will last through hours and hours of fun. <laughs> Lots of cuddling. <laughs> but yeah, some, uh, it is perfect. And the, with all those colors, you can make you know, kids clothes or whatever in, if you have a little girl or you don't know what the baby's going to be, you can make it um, a neutral color or whatever you'd like it to be. So do you have any tips for knitting sweaters for kids? Um, well, I think um, adding, I mean, a lot of people don't like to make uh, a pullover for kids because it's hard to get a baby in and out of those so doing a cardigan with big buttons or even a zipper is a good idea so that um, stuff doesn't end up in the baby's mouth uh, <laughs> you know everything seems to do that too <laughs> um, but part of the great thing about knitting for kids is that the projects are a lot smaller for them, so they go fast. So you can make them hats and sweaters and all sorts of stuff like that. It's a really good thing to like experiment. Like if you're like, I don't know how I feel about sweater knitting, like you can try making a sweater for a kid and it's like tiny. So you're like, all right, you yeah. know, you can just kind of like. Well, that's how I learned how to do. A, that's how I learned how to do a top-down raglan sweater. Was. A baby sweater because it goes fast and you get all the concepts in a compact size. <laughs> it's a wonderful thing. Yeah. And it doesn't take very much yarn, so it's not like a huge commitment. Right, that's true. Yeah, so and the baby won't fit. know if it doesn't quite fit right either. <laughs> <laughs> or just make it a little bit big and they'll go. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. So, are there any like specific like style tips or like how do you choose colors for kids sweaters like well it's kind of personal preference I like um, I like sophisticated colors like a nice soft pink with maybe a khaki stripe for a kid um, for like a little girl or like you said something pistachio green with black and silver for maybe a little boy like it's a it doesn't have to be you know, soft blue and bunny pink anymore. I think the kids can look <laughs> like a little, like a little, uh, little adult, and it's really cute. You know, it's funny. I was reading this um, article from like the turn of the century about like colors for kids, and they said that pink is a great color for boys. Yeah. Because it is a more subdued ver uh, color of red, which is a color of passion, and oh. men can be passionate. And so that's why they <laughs> recommended pink for boys, and blue was calming for women or for girls. Because it was like more of a docile color. Yeah, but also little boys and girls basically wore dresses until they were like four years old. Yeah. yeah. As well. I think Bobby's still wearing them. <laughs> he, um, he did mention something about, because we were about the same size, so he did mention that when we're done with our sweaters, he wanted to drink. And I was like, do you know No, that you said that. No, no, he said that. He's like, can we just dance around? And I was like, you know that I'm making a sweater dress, right? And he was like, oh, dang it. I just knew it was out of cashmere. Yeah. What can I say? You can just bunch it up at the bottom. Yeah. One of the things I like about knitting sweaters for kids is that, like, you can do some really classic styles, but sometimes you can do like a little like bits of bold color that you probably couldn't get away with on an adult sweater. Like I was looking on Pinterest this morning specifically at children's knitted sweaters, and there was this one that I was just like, "This is so cool!" Like it was it was three stripes, so it had a big block of silver up at the top, and then it was cream in the middle, and then it was silver again at the bottom, and it was a little cardigan. And it had these giant orange buttons, which 
would look adorable on a kid, but yeah, yeah adult, you'd be like, um, really? No, but so like that's kind of fun. Like when you knit for kids, like you can experiment with like little extra bits of sass that you wouldn't get to put on. Well, yeah, and I mean that's totally what I like to do. You can see here. I'm just going to show you my uu.com real quick, and my uh, you can see my aesthetic is definitely bright. Like our baby blankets are bright and much more non-traditional color palette. Oh my gosh, I love the pom poms. See, pom poms oh. another thing you can add to kids' things that are yes, just not something you would normally do for adults. Or um, how do I get back to myself? Sorry. I don't know. Oh, there, there we go. go. Um, I saw. What was it that I liked? Oh, like you can put like little, you know, ruffly bits, like just little details, not necessarily like the whole sweater. Cause that might be a bit much, but yeah, uh, something that had like a little ruffled edge on their cardigan for a little girl, and it looked so cute. So, you know, getting to experiment with like, especially finished. Or other things like that. I think it would be cool to do. Small scale is kind of fun. I think it'd be cool to do kind of like a Rebecca Danger style monster hoodie, Ooh. like or a sweatshirt. Ooh, maybe you I know. need to talk yeah, to her. Cool. You should that do be that because that would be great. Be like, hey, can we make a monster? Sweater? That would be cool. Collaboration. Yeah, <laughs> it's our favorite. Now. Um, you used to own a yarn store, is that correct? Um, yeah, I did work. I, um, I was a manager of a yarn store for, um, about three years. It was a lot of fun. So, I know, uh, I learned a lot about, uh, knitting techniques and that kind of stuff. In a very hands-on, very fast manner, because I didn't know knit how to knit very well when I, um, got started there. <laughs> so ladies would come in with their projects and I'd have to figure it out for them. So I had a lot of uh, trial by fire, but I learned um, I learned my techniques quickly and and they lasted me a long time. That's awesome. I I mean there's nothing like experience to get you um, into things, right? Yeah, totally. <laughs> or like you learn best by teaching other people. Right. That's exactly what I went through. And I learned a lot about patterns and kind of deconstructing them backwards. So it taught me a lot on how to um, how to work, uh, how to design a pattern, too. Because when you're trying to fix it for somebody, you have to kind of figure out where they are and how it all went together. Absolutely. And it's in about 30 seconds when they come in and set it on your table and go, what did I do? And you're like, <laughs> I don't know. Because a lot of the patterns we sell in the store won't, um, you know, the, the people in the store haven't necessarily had a chance to knit them. Or read right. at all. Right, that too. <laughs> yeah. Um, How did your uh, time working in the yarn store uh, inform how you designed your yarn line. Well, I, I mean, a lot of what I like from uh, being in a yarn, a lot of my, I guess, concept is make it fast, make it easy, because uh, knitters are on the go. You know, it's a great, um, a great hobby to take with you. Like you said, you're gonna take it on the bus and take it while you're getting your hair done. You can't take your quilting, you know? So, <laughs> um, a lot of the knitting you want to get done is to keep your hands busy and make something while you're out being social. So, I think if your project doesn't bog you down too much, you can get it done and you can move on to the next thing. And it makes you more successful. You finish something, you feel accomplished, your friends love your stuff. <laughs> so that's kind of my whole concept with patterns is um, don't make them too overwhelming. I have a few, you know, we have some cable patterns and we have some good color work patterns, but a lot of my general theory is keep it simple, stupid kind of thing. 
I am I'm totally on the same page. I love to have things that I don't have to think too hard about because then I can, you know, not mess it up as I'm doing other things like while Right. I agree. Yeah, because yeah, you're chatting, you're hanging out with people, you're watching TV, but you're still working with your hands and getting something done. So it's kind of cool. So you are um, knitting a sweater for the 30-day challenge. Can you tell us about what you're knitting? I I can. So I have here. So let me know what what got you interested in doing the challenge? Because I know beforehand we talked about this, and you were like, "I'm going to get someone else to knit the sweater for us." And I don't think I can do the challenge myself. And then all of a sudden, I'm see Heather making the sweater. Well. So I did that, and um, that is a good thing to show, too, because it's amazing. Um, so my friend Jen is making one, and hold on just a second. It is the perfect example of what you were talking about with a, an orange pop for kids. It's so cute. So this is going to be a rag, a raglan sweater, like a baseball style uh, little jersey with a nice pop of orange at the top. And we had to do some things and rework it um, because with the color change on the sides, it's it was a little challenging. And she did a beautiful job here of um, twisting the colors together to kind of Lock in the panel. Very impressed because we we've thought about how you would approach this problem because using our framework, it's actually there's no good way to do this. No. To add the sleeves in in a separate color because when you're knitting in the round, you you just can't strand the yarn across. <laughs> right. You have no. To that's exactly right. That looks so great. I'm really excited. So usually when a sweater is constructed like this, doing a raglan baseball style with a separate color sleeve, it's seen together. You knit the sleeve in a different color right. and then seam it on. So her solution for dealing with that problem is actually really inventive. Well, we kind of had to talk it over because at first she thought that's how it was going to be, was bottom up and then seam together. And I said, uh, I read through your course, and I was like, um... That's not how we're going to do this. So then we had to figure out. <laughs> so I suggested um, making a, a notch down the back, you know, and then putting a little button band to close it up. Because that way the top could be worked back and forth mm -hmm. so that you could keep maintain the colors. And then you could join in the bottom in the round to make the body and the sleeves. Um, but then I also thought, wouldn't it be cute to make your seam on one of the raglans so that then the buttons can be here and they're their own kind of cute detail. So that's what she's trying. So we subtracted two stitches from the front and two stitches from the sleeve to um, so that when you when we put the button band in it's not bulky and bunching up right there. Right. So it's just going to be a tiny little row of buttons but um, you know, hopefully it works. <laughs> like yeah. I said, experimenting for a small sweater. Yeah, no, we were super impressed because, yeah, literally we've been, like, talking for a while. Like, how would you do that? I like, really wanted you... to do something like that. So, so she's basically doing a form of intarsia. Yeah. To, like to like I showed, the, she was color, she twist. she just twists it over every time she switches to a new color. So then they're still, like, attached. To each other. Totally. <laughs> Did you see how it was kind of locked in? Yeah. yeah that's okay. Great. So then, your so, adult size sweater? What? So you, then your sweater, right? Yeah, because once it came to it, there was so much excitement, and I can't turn down an opportunity to knit. <laughs> 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 so then, uh, I thought, well, it'll help me develop a new pattern for you, you, and. Um, I kind of can have the buzz, and it helped me with the motivation of finishing it. Because that's a lot of my problem, is I get excited about a project, and then I don't get excited about the project after a while. <laughs> so I thought this would be a good way for me to finish something. And 
as it is right now, I am I am right on track with oh, day eight. I I've separated for the sleeves and I've knit down the body. And I added a little pocket up here on the on the top. The stripe you see there is for um, it's called a, a set in pocket. And yeah. I think you guys are talking about it in tomorrow's lesson. Yes, I believe so. So if you're doing the 30 day sweater course or following along in the book, oh I'll yeah, talk about that tomorrow. So yeah. setting in pockets, really cool. So, so that's all it is. That'll that's kind of hanging out for me until I finish the rest of the sweater, and then mm -hmm. I'll go back and I'll make that little pocket. So how are you finding the the course and the framework for you as far as you know? The ease of ease of being able to keep up, how it's broken down, uh, you know, being able to follow along. I really like it. Um, I've made, like I've said, I've I've made and designed sweaters in the past, but um, I've actually learned a few things about row gauge and um, you know how far the increases should go and if I had wanted to do a V-neck, figuring all that out, just stuff I hadn't thought of directly yet. So I know I'm definitely going to take that ebook and keep it in my files forever and refer back to it because I think it's a I think it's an exceptional resource to have. And just the formulas for doing the whole sweater. You know, if I um, if I change my needle size and my stitch gauge changes on a different sweater pattern, all I have to do is plug in the numbers right in that system and you know, I can design my whole sweater. Now that I've done it once, I can do it in, in five minutes the next time, which is totally cool. So, yeah, I think the course is great, and I really like, well, I think the ebook is fantastic, and like I said, I'll definitely keep it on hand. And the, um, I really like the course because, like I said, I'm one that kind of sets stuff down and walks away from it, so... I like that it's ongoing and helping motivate me. <laughs> <laughs> I particularly enjoy the challenge because everyone's like kind of, you know, yeah. pushing each other forward. So when, like, whenever we post anything on Facebook or whatever, and everyone's posting things, like, everyone's liking things, and you want to post. I know. Things, so you can, you know, like, update your progress. I think it's great. Like. If there was this much encouragement all the time, I'd be like, yeah, what's that knitting project? I was knitting like a maniac the one day, and I said something to my sister, and she was like, you know, you don't have to do it in the 30 days. And I was like, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, this will be done in 30 days. Yeah, yeah it will be done and hanging on the mannequin. <laughs> That's or I'll great. be wearing it all November. <laughs> That's kind of my plan. I'm like, I just get so excited about these sweaters that I'm just like, I just want to finish it because I got to wear it. I just want to wear it now. Right, right. It finally feels like fall today because you're in Southern California as well. Yeah. And it's cool and it's supposed to rain today. I and know. Oh, man. I got to get the sweater done. I want to wear it. I was actually trying to figure out what shoes I'm going to wear <laughs> that are not flip-flops. <laughs> I'm like, oh, it might actually be cold outside. <laughs> What is this? Yeah, I was like, usually I don't have to plan an outfit that involves a jacket. But I know. I was, yeah. <laughs> oh, hey. I have to, you know, match my clothing to an, an extra piece of, of garment. Well, you did a good job. Thank you. I'm just going to go. You guys can talk about it. <laughs> nice oh. knowing you, Johnny. <laughs> what, you don't, you don't get excited about wearing your sweaters? I, I mean, I do. I'm excited to get to wear it, but... I don't wear a lot of sweaters in general. You don't get cold. No, so I just don't ever think about it. Like this is like that I the fact that I have a shirt over another shirt is like a really big deal. Yeah. You know. You know, it's dipping all the way down to like 65 today for Yeah. It's freezing. Here. So like, <laughs> it's possible in like normal areas of the world to actually have seasons, like you have I to know. have that the weather forecast saying that the high today was supposed to be 68. Yeah, anything under is 70 right. is Whoa. basically like... Pull out you, your winter clothes. You know, you throw water out and it's like ice. That's, basically, that's what yeah. it feels like. That's what when, it feels I was, like. 
when I had the yarn store, I had a lady tell me that she couldn't leave the store because uh, because it was raining and you can't drive on water. <laughs> That's Southern California for you. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that's really funny. I can only imagine um, moving somewhere where it actually is cold. Like, well, actually, we need to wear sweaters more than you know two days. Well, we um, did. We lived a year. We lived in Colorado, in northern Colorado, where it does snow. Yeah. You know. Nine months of the year. <laughs> I feel like it's nine it's, months. It's you know it's it's an interesting place because normally the climate is very comparable to here. You know. Like, it's, it's nice, it's sunny, you know, 250 days out of the year. You know, they, they only get, like, 20-something inches of rain, so it's not like a lot of other places in, in the east and stuff where it just snows and it's just snow yeah. for the next six months. Like, right, I grew up in Pennsylvania, and that's how... Yeah, no, it snows there and then it melts two days later. Like, that's kind of how it goes. But there was one day where Lacey was like, hey... Let's go walk down to the library. And the library was two blocks away from our house. So not yeah. a long walk. It, it was like four blocks away from the house. And actually, interesting fact, it was on the same street that Interweave Press uh, is on. We, yes. we lived a block away from them. And so Lacey's like, yeah, let's go to the library. You know, it's a nice, cool day out. It was six degrees outside and so and we, it was freezing it was like windy and six degrees yeah well even if it wasn't windy it was six degrees outside <laughs> yeah and so we're like walking and it feels like someone is shoving like a pin cushion <laughs> up your nose yeah and we get two block halfway to where we need to go and we were like run inside the coffee shop and like thaw out for half an hour before we walk the other two blocks to our destination. It was pretty ridiculous. So I'm glad that now my like version of cold is like 65. Like I'm okay with that. Right. <laughs> like I realize that most people think it's ridiculous, but I'm like, that's as cold as it gets. I'm yeah. sure there's many people in the chat room right now going like, really, guys, really. <laughs> I know. <laughs> We're the same people that, like, pull out our winter coats when it gets down to 50, so... Yeah. I know. I do. I've never been warm a day in my life, so... You yeah. know, it only helps that it's just a more moderate temperature. <laughs> I was writing all these articles about, like, choosing, uh, like, fiber that is, like, suitable for your climate. So, like, you know, if you live in Southern California, you probably don't want to be knitting things out of, like, really warm yarns and stuff. Well, one of the good things, actually, about wool is that it is more breathable. While it's warm, um, it's actually, uh, a, it, it's naturally wicking. And right, things. it's so, regulate your body. Yeah, it's a temperature right. regulator. Right. But I generally tend to, like, just throw all my own advice out the window because I'm always freezing, so I'm like, all right. I live here, I'm knitting in cashmere, and that's fine, because yeah. it's cold, so it's good. But, it, like, Johnny, he he would never wear something that warm. No, I think I'm going to start knitting all the rest of my sweaters out of cotton. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I made this one more of a jacket type. I know, I like it. It's whatever, really because I want to wear it as a coat, wear it as a coat more like than you know just an everyday sweater if i were lacy i'd be stealing that thing oh you can bet i'm sure I'm she's lazy. already plotted like <laughs> yeah i um he had this other sweater that he was working on before we started this um that i'm really excited for him to finish it's got like this really cool cable detail along the raglan seam and it's made out of this really lightweight yarn and it feels amazing like it's got this really incredible drape and stuff and i'm so ready for him to be finished with it so I can steal it and wear it with some, like, leggings or something. What? Your other sweater. Oh, yeah. That's going to be a nice one. But that one's... I can get, I can get it. It's um, one of those really great things when um, your husband doesn't wear sweaters very often, but he's a knitter and only knits clothes for himself, so... Yeah. I'm sure that well, it's they not get, like you're going to knit a sweater for me. I just make sure that they get used... 
so about it, then I'm going to waste. <laughs> well, here is my other sweater, and it's got, a, like, a really nice drape to it. I have to redo this whole sleeve because it's tighter than I was anticipating it being. And I did a cable along the raglan. Oh, wow. It looks really nice. Like, I love how simple it is and stuff. I was going to do, like, a shawl collar here, but I knew I just wouldn't have the time during this challenge to, like, finish this sweater. Not about that game. No, this is, actually, this is a DK weight yarn, and I'm knitting it four stitches per inch. So it's nice and loose. Yeah. But um, it's a cool yarn. It's it's by a fiber company, and it's called Savannah, and it's like a, it's wool, 50% wool, uh, soya, silk, and linen. Wow. And, and cotton. It feels awesome, and it's cool. So it's like the perfect yarn for California, like just a great fiber blend. Uh, but yeah, eventually I'll have to finish this one. People in the in the forum on the core site keep asking me to give them an update on the progress. But there's not going to be any updates anytime soon. <laughs> uh, I might get that one done before the spring so I can... I, I figured it would be a really great kind of, like, beachy sweater. Like, you're out at Bolsa Chica, at the fire pits, someone's playing yeah. the guitar, and you just throw on a sweater like that that's a real nice and light, you know, but it'll keep you warm. Right. You know, and then smell like smoke the next morning. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Now, you, you guys are uh, partnering with uh, one of our favorite online yarn stores, Noble Knits. Yep. for the 30-day sweater, and you guys are doing a special deal. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so uh, noblenotes.com is sponsoring um, the is sponsoring UU Yarns for the 30-day sweater challenge, and they've given everybody 15% um, off for the whole month of October off okay. of um, UU Woolly Worsted. So if you use the code 30-day sweater, all one word, in checkout, yeah, you get 15% off. And Noble Knits is actually in the chat room right now. They posted a link to where you can Oh, did she? Oh, good. It's up a little further, but um, yeah, it's in there. Go get your UU from Noble Knits, and I really recommend it. I love the meeting with this year. Like, it's one of my favorites, so... Thank you. That's yeah. nice. <laughs> I try really hard to make it good. Yeah, it's definitely one of those yarns that can be a staple in your stash, you know. Right. Just a solid, you know, nice, good, solid colors. You know, you guys don't do anything that's variegated or anything like that. No. Which is, you know, it's, I don't really like variegated yarns very much. No. So. I don't either. Uh, so it's nice to have, you know, some good solid color choices that you can go to and, and make your, and you know, it's worth simple weight, So it's like it's very versatile, it's washable, yeah. Right, well, you can pick it up and do anything from a baby sweater to an adult sweater, and it works great. Or you can make, you know, I don't want to say the word shawls or hats during this show, but, you know, it is there. <laughs> well, Heather, it's been nice talking to you. And <laughs> We're going to kick her off the show for taking <laughs> You can go, I mean, too. There's oh, my sweater. I'm working on the, the projects which shall not be named. Wow, that was weird. <laughs> yes. Oh, excuse me. So anyway, it's great for sweaters and especially great for kids' clothes because it is, uh, like I said, easy care. So uh, go ahead, go get some at noblenets.com. They carry our entire range of colors, so you can pick and choose, add stripes or fair isle, and it's great. So, Heather, we're going to do some Q&A a little bit later in the okay. show. Do you want to hang out and yep. help us answer some questions? Sure. Great. Well, uh, before we get to that, we want to uh, check in with Bobbert on our social media. But we do want to let you know that the Sweater Knitting Show is sponsored by 30dayswitter.com, uh, where you can learn to knit your very own custom-fit, top-down raglan sweater, just like Heather is making. Uh, with either our ebook or our online course. And these walk you step by step through the process of everything that you need to 
do in order to design your own sweater. Now, you may be thinking, like, oh, my goodness, like, I've never designed anything before in my life. In fact, someone emailed, did they email you the other day? And they were like, I, I don't know how to design a sweater. And then what did she tell you? She said, I want a tunic link sweater. I want it to be a cardigan with a shawl collar and pockets. <laughs> it's already designed. <laughs> designed her own sweater. And I just walked her through and I was like, well, you've already picked your design. And here are the days that you'll need to look at specific things to make that. But that's as much as it takes to design a sweater. It's just basically, what do you want your sweater to be? Yeah, and we walk you through all of those choices before you even start. So if you have a very clear picture in your mind about what sweater it is that you want to make, and then when you reach that point in the course or the book, we show you exactly how to incorporate that into your sweater. Now, again, we only do the top-down raglan construction, and the reason for that is because uh, there's no seams. You can try it on as you go, so you can make adjustments if you're finding any issues with anything. Um, and because it's based on your own measurements, you can use any yarn, any needles that you want, and you can make it for any size person. Someone emailed me the other day and was like, hey, your chart here only says it goes up to size 52 inches on the chest, and I have a 56 inch. And I was like, that's okay, because we use your measurement. The chart that's included is just for generic sizes, you know, so in case you can't measure a, per a person that you want to make a gift for, that's okay, you can plug in those numbers and make a sweater for your niece or your grandson or your, you know, brother or Whoever. sister, you know. Um, so it's an incredibly flexible framework for you to uh, make your own sweater. And then we take the whole process of making the sweater and chop it up into 30 simple steps. So you can do one thing a day and you'll have a sweater that's completely finished in 30 days or less, because you could do more than one step a day if you had the time. Um, but we, the goal is to make it something that you don't really have to think about. You go, I just need to do what I need to do for today, and that's it. And you're not worrying about, oh, well, I'm going to have to seam this together later, and i got to do all this extra stuff. It's much simpler than that. So if you're interested in checking out the 30 Day Sweater book or course, you can go to 30daysweater.com slash book or slash course. And if you want, you can download our free sweater planning guide. So uh, what we've done is we've taken all of the questions that you need to answer before you start knitting a sweater, and we put it into this beautiful 30-page guide. It also has a ton of tips and tricks from uh, bloggers and designers and yarn companies from all over the industry, and uh, they have just a lot of really helpful, useful advice. Um, we show you how to uh, We give you a little calendar so you can kind of plan out your sweater, knitting yourself, and that's completely free. But we've had people ask, like, how much does this cost? Because they saw it and were like, this is so pretty, you know, like, where do I buy it? My mom actually was one of those people. She, I <laughs> sent her the planning guide, and she was like, wow, is this the one people buy? And I was like, no, Mom, this is the free part. So it's really great, and it's free, so you should get it. So you can go to 30daysweater.com slash guide, and you just type in your email address, and it'll take you to a page to download the guide, and you're good to go. Um, and there's a coupon code in the guide to get 25% off of either the course or the book. So that's a, a great place to get a, a little bit of a discount as well. Now, it's not too late to enter into the 30-day sweater challenge. You can still start your sweater and get going. We have a couple people that I know... Uh, in the Ravelry group that are like, I'm just beginning, or I just got my yarn, I'm casting on today, that's completely fine. Um, you know, we want to motivate you to finish a sweater. Whether you get it done in these 30 days or not is really beside the point. The goal is to give you a, a goal that you can reach <laughs> and, uh, and do it in a time frame that is, um, you know, achievable. Um, but there's also not any, you know, requirement as far as the size of the sweater that you need to do. So if you want to make a baby sweater in two weeks or a week or a couple days, that's fine as well. Um, again, we just want you to get over whatever is keeping you from making your next or your first sweater. So you can go to 30daysweater.com slash challenge and sign up there for the 30-day sweater challenge. It's free to join. You don't have to buy the course or the book in order to be a part of that. Um, you can just find a sweater pattern that you want. You can, you can get Heather's ColourPop 
uh, sweater at UU and knit that. That's a great, uh, you know, simple sweater to, to work with and a, a great way to kind of show off your personality in a subtle way. Um, or to find some other sweater on uh, Ravelry and just join along. Uh, so that's 30daysweater.com slash challenge. You can find all the information out about that. Now, we've been having a lot of people that are in the challenge showing off their work, and it's great because we're kind of at a point in the challenge where you can really see sweaters taking shape. So we're going to check in with Bobbert, and he's going to show us what's been going on on the interwebs. Wait, while we're doing that, if you have any questions for us or for Heather, go ahead and start putting those in the chat room. So yep. we'll come back to those after we've looked at our pictures with Bob. Absolutely. So, Bobbert, how's it going? Hey, all right, it's my turn, finally. So, um, how's it going, everyone? Um, uh, let's, let's take a look at some of the things you guys have been working on. And uh, just as a side note, yes, Heather, I am single right now. Um, <laughs> hey, I was asking for all the other ladies. <laughs> all right, well, let's uh, have a look at what everybody else has been working on. So... Um, we have somebody, uh, this, this one was sent to us through the emails, um, uh, and uh, we see the progress going on here, looking really good. Um, I like the, uh, the like, pink that they're adding in there with the, uh, with the, the, the dark gray. Um, I, always, I always enjoyed wearing that as, as a guy, so. Um, and then uh, here's one from Ravelry. Um, Again, from Brandywine, uh, seeing more of the progress on this one. This is, I believe, the uh, kind of Icelandic uh, um, color work that we've got going on. Um, coming along, looking good. Can't wait to see more. So here's another one from Ravelry. Um, so they're, uh, they're coming along really well with theirs. Um, I'm, I'm catching up. I'm almost to this point in mine, just not really. Um, <laughs> Um, and then uh, here's another one that looks like uh, one of the uh, a kid sweater. Um, love the, uh, the the colors we got going on here, um, and uh, I, I love that green. And then the the trim on this is 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 going to be great. Um, and I mean, look at the progress. Like you said earlier, Johnny, that you know this is a time where people can really see what's becoming other projects, and and the sweater is like really taking form. So, um, again, some more progress on Roxy's um, here on Facebook. Sure. Um, the the yeah, one I think probably one of the only crocheters we have following along with us. Um, but looking good, I can't wait to see like a lot more of this. Um, I believe they just started working on on the sleeve areas. Um, we have a few crocheters that are joining us, but I don't think anybody's been documenting it like Roxy has been. Oh, really? I, I would love to see if there's any more people crocheting along with us. Um, so here's some more from Facebook. That's Remember, that's a 30-day sweater Facebook. Um, and uh, we Great. see a little bit of the color work going on here. Um, looking really good. Nice choice. Nice uh, little transitions and colors. You know, what's interesting about color work that's done like this, because this is Fair Isle, Fair Isle is only done with two colors at a time. So it's all, it looks like it's very complex as far as how many colors are included, but except for like one row or two rows I can see there, it's almost all one color or two colors in the same row. So people mm -hmm. shouldn't be as scared of color work, I think, as they, they are. It's a, it's a lot easier than it looks. But it looks so cool. Totally yeah, it, it is really coming out there. So. Uh, here's somebody else's progress. I believe they're working on the sleeve area. Um, but uh, I like that they've laid it all out here with not only the yarn that they're using, their project, and some of the printout um, um, that, they're, that they're using here. So um, looking good, coming along. Um, I'm on my way to catch up. <laughs> So, into Instagram. So, um, again, we've got somebody, uh, Bronx Girl, I believe that I've shown some of her stuff before. Um, but I like the, those increases. It looks like she's got some cable work going on that. Um, but looking really good. 
Um, here's another one. Somebody uh, clearly working out a V-neck. Um, like their labeling there, day eight. Um, <laughs> so, and this one I thought was really cool, even though you can't really see their project. This is their 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 yarn bag, which they brought to work on their um, their sweater at the knit night. So, um, really cool. Um, uh, yeah. Bring your sweaters, work on it wherever you can. Well, Stephanie um, is, uh, she works a lot with a lot of yarn companies, so she's been instrumental in getting a lot of the sponsorships and donations for the giveaways that we've been doing, particularly Imperial, which is part of the giveaway for this week. Um, Stephanie's uh, been working a lot in, and, and also scheduling guests for the show, so a big thanks to to her and the Wool Wide Web for their help and support throughout the entire event. Awesome. Hey, look who's And looking here, we've got <gasps> who's there? Other than UU Yarns. Um, and I just have to say, I, I like your whole setup here. I like the little basket you got there with your swatch yeah. and, and yeah. all that stuff. Really cool pick. Um, keep it up. And Thank look you. at here. Oh boy! Oh, All of those awesome. that were asking the other day about um, Lacey's Instagram. There it is, right there. That's how you spell it. You can find her and follow her. And here's her latest progress on her sweater. Um, but I have to say, looking good, Lacey. So, and uh, that's all we have for today. But keep it up. Keep it all. Keep working on your uh, your your sweaters and. Take photos, uh, post them up. Um, we'd love to see them. If you got Instagram, join us on Instagram at um, 30 Day Sweater on Instagram, um, and you can just hashtag 30 Day Sweater. Um, we also have our Twitter, um, and then again our Facebook page, um, and uh, our Ravelry Ravelry group, um, which is 30 Day Sweater Challenge um, on Ravelry, right? Yeah, the group is the 30 Day Sweater Challenge, but you can get there by going to 30daysweater.com slash Ravelry. That'll send you right there. Rather than trying to search and find it on Ravelry, easiest way is just 30daysweater.com slash Ravelry and facebook.com slash 30daysweater. So, Bobber, when do we get to uh, see the progress on your sweater? Are you going to be posting pictures soon? Yeah, actually, I'm going to be doing some more today, but, like, here's... Here's where I'm at. Oh, at least you got a couple rows on today. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yep, but I'm uh, working on it. I'm actually extremely worried. I'm going to have to have somebody inspect my work because I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it's, it's great. I mean, I, I, I just, you know, i got to work on those increases. Those are the things that are really tripping me up. So, but... Um, yeah, can't wait to keep working on it and actually get more of it done. So Good. I'm well, excited to see it. <laughs> and I'll so. love you. <laughs> Plus, it's Buffalo. I mean, how cool is that? So. Yeah. How warm is that? <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> on, want so. All yeah. right. Well, I'll see you guys later. Thank you. All right, so let's see. Do we have any questions today? Now, this isn't necessarily a question, but Rindy says, I'm so far behind, my yarn hasn't come yet, but I do know what I want. I'm making a sweater for my youngest daughter. Uh, she's adult, not a child size, and she showed me something that she'd like at the store, just waiting. That's entirely okay. Again, there is no penalty for not finishing your sweater in 30 days. Despite the rumors of purple buffaloes, you'll. I mean, well, well, maybe we'll find out. If there's just suddenly like a bunch of purple buffaloes all over the the world, then we'll just start um, letting the Michigans know. Right, and they'll get a whole new line of the purple buffalo line. Uh, let's see. Jen Giggly or Giggly says, "Big fan of UU Worldly Worsted. I'm knitting my sweater with it, and it's incredibly soft. And like Heather said, perfect for babies, children. The colors are super rad too." Yeah, that's the one I showed you earlier with the um, the blue arms and the orange at the neck. 
Ah, so she's a plant. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I am so excited to see that sweater. I really want to see how it turns out, and I might do something similar, because I think that's so cool. Okay, well, we can talk. Yeah. Uh, I also see. have some, like, new little babies coming into our life. Not our own, but, like, nieces <laughs> and nephews. So I might need to be making some little sweaters and, like, a button, like, raglan would be super adorable. So, we'll see. That would be it cute. It's like people said that they're losing the broadcast, but it still says that we're on air, so... I don't think they really have any questions. <laughs> well, they may have, like, lost the ability to ask questions, so... Because oh. they can't see the answers. Roni says, I learned that using both throwing in picking, so English style and continental style knitting, is really good for color work. You keep one color in each hand, and uh, that's a way that you can uh, avoid, or you can also avoid long fo floats um, and the potential of puckering that those bring. So, yeah, yeah and I have used that. To, that's pretty much the only time I knit continentals when I do two colors. Yeah. It just makes it easier, because then you're you're throwing with one and throwing with the other, and you can do, you know, each stitch. That hurts my brain to try. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> once you get the hang, it's just practice, just like everything else. Once you get yeah. the hang, it's really not that difficult. I think when I do color work, it's about, like, a quarter of the speed of, like, just regular. Oh, I always get, I'm like, oh, I get to do another row. I get, It goes ten times faster for me because I get to switch colors back and forth all the time. I do like, like, because it, usually the color of patterns I work are only over, like, eight stitches. So, like, if I'm working, like, say there's four rows that are a certain, like, you know, repeat or whatever, like, I get really excited about finishing those little sections, but because I knit so much slower, I'm like, okay, am I there yet? Really, I haven't knit four rows yet? Like, okay. I have the exact opposite. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you're just, like, faster, and it just goes quicker, and you're like, oh, yeah, I finished a row, woohoo! I don't know. We'll see. All right. Well, we're going to wrap things up for today. Uh, if you have any other questions, you're welcome to email them to questions at 30daysweater.com. Don't forget to join us tonight for our epic live knit night. Uh, you can find that right here at 30daysweater.com slash live, uh, and you'll be able to watch and join in. You can also find us on Google Plus, we're 30 Day Sweater, and we'll be posting the Hangout as an open Hangout. So if you have Google Plus, you should be able to just connect and join us in the video as well. And we have about 10 spots or so that we can fit people to join in for that. Uh, so that would be really cool. Yeah. Lacey will not be here this evening, so I will hopefully be having a special guest on uh, to you know hang out and knit and chat with. And announce our giveaway. We will be announcing the giveaway, but there is still time for you to uh, join in the, the giveaway. You can go to 30daysweater.com slash giveaway. And we have two prizes this week, one from Imperial Yarn, uh, which includes a full sweater's worth of yarn in a beautiful uh, pearl gray, they call it. And it also comes with a sweater pattern. Right. Uh, and we also have a $100 gift card from the Buffalo Wool Company, uh, that one lucky person will win as well. Don't forget to take advantage of the special discount on the UU yarn at Noble Knits. You can go to noblenits.com and use the code 30 Day Sweater to get 15% off of your UU yarn purchase. That's, That's for the mouthful. whole month of October. Yes, so that that is available during the entire challenge. Thanks so much to uh, Heather Wolpole of UU Yarns for joining us today. It's been a pleasure hanging out with you. We really are excited to see how your sweater turns out, and I'm glad to hear that you're going to be turning it into a pattern for your uh, your yarn line. Yeah, thanks. I think it'll be a lot of fun, and I, I'm i glad to be here. If people want to find out more information about your products, where should they go online? Uh, they can go to uu.com, which is spelled like the sheep, E-W-E-E-W-E.com. -E -E and wow. there we have a full list of online and brick-and-mortar retail stores that, that carry Wooly Worsted. Awesome. Well, 
um, yeah, definitely go check that out. Follow them on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram yeah. so you can see uh, Heather's progress on her sweater. Yeah, and I'm UU, UU Yarns on everything. So Twitter, Facebook, Ravelry. So come find me. I love to, and Instagram, I'm on there too. Great. Uh, that's all that we have for today. We will be back here tomorrow at 10.30 a.m., uh, most likely. You know, we had some technical difficulties today. got started a little late, but uh, that's the goal, 10.30 a.m. Pacific. The Knit Along Tonight starts at 7 p.m. Eastern, so that's 4 p.m. Pacific, and we'll be hanging out for a good few hours, so if you can't make it right away, that's fine. You can still join in and uh, just knit along with us. We don't have any agenda. We don't have any things that we're going to be talking about. We're just going to be knitting and chatting and hanging out, having a good time. And I'm going to get a lot more progress done on my <laughs> sweater. So uh, subscribe to us on YouTube, and uh, we'll be on iTunes pretty soon, hopefully. So. And if you've missed any episodes of the Sweater Knitting Show, you can find it at 30daysweater.com. All right. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Yeah.